All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to briefly go over how to create a landscape. In landscapes in Unreal, one thing to be careful of is that they will often um, take up a lot of memory uh, as far as the rendering process is concerned. These can get very large as far as your level is concerned. So to begin, one thing that the newer versions of Unreal have done is they have now made a modes button at the top of their window here. If you click on the mode button here, you can see that you have several different modes you can work with, one of which is landscape. If you do not have a landscape assigned to your level, this will generate one for you. Now, when you generate a landscape, just so you're aware, by default, normally, it's going to be set to 63 by 63 quads. For this demonstration, and for time's sake, I actually took down the size of my sections uh, per the content area down to 15 by 15, just to help it with rendering and the processing a little bit. Note that you can do fill world if you so choose. Um, and also too, if you already have a material set up for working with landscapes, you can assign a material right out of the gate. This is something, however, that we will look at later and you can also set up later. I'm gonna go ahead and create. And you can now see that I have generated a whole landscape environment here. At any point in time, you can come up to mode, you can go back and actually select your landscape to work with here. So just to zoom out and show you a little bit as far as the controls of the landscape, notice that you can select it and notice you do have your controller scaling, your rotation and your movement, just like you would any other mesh in Unreal. For demo's sake, I am going to pull this down just a little bit further, just so that I can still see here as far as my starting area. Now, when I'm ready to work with the landscape mode, if I hop back over here, up on the top bar here, you get three different options here where you can either manage your landscape mode and add in different quadrants or remove them. But probably the big thing you're going to want to jump into is sculpting where by using a paintbrush setup, which you can see you have options here on the left-hand side as far as the brush size, and also the edge of the brush or how much of a gradient fall off you have. By just clicking with your mouse button, you can begin to generate a landscape environment here. You can also as well, holding in the shift key, on your keyboard, you can also kind of create valleys. You also have several different options up at the top here where for instance, like maybe I don't want those valleys there, I can actually come back in and flatten this out a little bit more. I can also come in and smooth edges. and kind of work there with my different layouts. You also have several others, including erosion, which will kind of give you a feeling of natural type of interactions with the environment. Same with hydro, where you can also go in, if I make a little bit more area here, where as far as things were weathered down over time, you're encouraged to play around with these as you work. Overall, this can be a very time consuming process because the one thing you wanna remember overall is you wanna make sure that the user can actually interact with and move around in the game environment. It is not uncommon that you could generate something whereby a player might not be able to actually run up and over. If that's what you're going for as far as an edge, that's great, but you don't want your user to actually get caught on the geometry of your game environment. So that gives us kind of the introduction here as far as working with the landscape itself, as far as constructing the landscape. 